Hi and welcome to the video. I've been shooting with my Canon EOS R5 for a bit more than three and a half years now. I've used it in snow and rain in the Swiss Alps, in very warm conditions in southern France and Spain, and then also in tropical environment, both in Singapore and in Costa Rica. And overall, I need to say I'm very happy with the camera. I think what you get for the money is an amazing deal actually, but there are still some things that I don't like about it. And now that an R5 Mark II is coming in the foreseeable future probably, I wanted to use this video to mention what I don't like about this camera and what I wish would be coming in the R5 Mark II. Many of these things of course require an improved hardware, but there are also some things that I think could easily be solved with a software a firmware update. I think the number one wish I have is that the R5 Mark II would have a stacked sensor. I need to say that the R5 sensor has a very fast readout for a non-stacked sensor. It's more or less on par with the R6 Mark II and you cannot compare this to let's say a Sony A7 Mark IV, a Canon R7, a Nikon Z6 Mark II and so on but still it's not quite on the level of a stacked sensor. And you can see this for example um, if you take a shot of a heron or another bird that is flying by and you follow the bird, you take some pictures and you have some vertical structures in the background. For example reeds, trees, bushes, something like this. You will see that all of them are a bit tilted and this looks a bit weird and cannot really be yeah, corrected in post so that's a bit annoying. The other thing is, and I need to say that this doesn't happen very often, it really happens only on rare occasions. I have the feeling, especially if I use a very short shutter speed on very fast flying birds, such as songbirds, then I can see in the wings, especially in the tip of the wings, some jagging that goes along. You can see some uh, horizontal lines and that just doesn't look very nice because the wing doesn't look so smooth anymore and also something that is not very easy or basically impossible at least for me to correct in post. So that's also something that would probably disappear with a stacked sensor. And finally, if you shoot the R5 in the electronic shutter with the uh, 20 frames per second, the bit depth is actually reduced so you have a lower dynamic range of maximum 12 bit. Here it's important to know if you shoot at a higher ISO, you will anyway not get more than 12 bit because this all camera sensor have this problem that the higher you push the ISO, the lower your dynamic range will be. So if you shoot at 1600, 3200 ISO, you will not notice the difference. But if you shoot, let's say at 100 or 400 ISO, you will profit from a higher dynamic range if you switch the camera to the electronic first curtain or the mechanical shutter. Of course, it's not always important to have a higher dynamic range, but there are some situations where it could be very useful, for example, in backlit. And backlit is also sometimes the type of shoot where I use a lower ISO, because if you have some flares in the background, the image gets very bright and you need to underexpose a bit and I often use 100 or 400 ISO in these situations. Of course, the stacked sensor would also allow a blackout free shooting, which of course improves greatly the usability of the camera when you take flight shots, especially of small and erratic birds. Also sensor related is the shortest shutter speed that you can get. And with the R5, this is uh, 1 8,000th of a second, no matter in which shutter mode you are, like mechanical, electronic first curtain or electronic shutter. And often this is more than enough. Maybe some of you have never reached this eight, that one eight thousandth of a second because usually as wildlife photographers we don't get enough light on the sensor. But there's also some situations where I had too much light on the sensor. And this one eight thousand was getting limiting. I was already at 100 ISO. So I actually needed to stop down the lens to an aperture from 2.8 to 4. And this was a bit annoying because this most of the times happened when I was shooting backlit and especially back with, with backlit with some flares in the background that were really bright and once you stop down your lens these flares will get smaller and not so pretty anymore in my opinion. 
Of course, this is a bigger problem if you use a f1.8 or f2.8 lens, but even with f4 lenses, I was sometimes at my limit. I remember that when I went to southern France, um, I was shooting some flamingos in backlit, and I was very happy that on the set 8, I could in fact dial an exposure time that was shorter than 1 8,000th of a second. I think I was at 1 10,000th and 1 16,000th. And this was with, was with the 600 millimeter f4, so not even I don't even want to think about how it would look like with an f2.8 or 1.8 lens. So I also wish that the R5 Mark II would get one uh, 32 thousandth of a second, maybe even one 64 thousandth of a second, but I think one 32 thousandth of a second should suffice for most of the things. Let's stick again with the sensor and speed. This time I talk about the frame rate. Uh, most of the times 20 frames per second is plenty fast for me, it's really enough. Uh, for normal flying birds that's a really good um, frame rate, however if you have really fast flying birds I sometimes just wish it had more. For example I was taking some pictures of a dipper um, like a few days ago and I was trying to take picture when the dipper was, well it was kind of diving looking for food and then uh, taking off the water surface and here I just would have liked more frames per second because it would give, have given me more options, more different wing positions. Especially with all these water droplets, I found li felt like uh, 20 frames per second is not so much anymore. The R6 Mark II can already do 40 frames per second. However, it has less resolution, but I would be happy if the R5 Mark II could just do uh, 30 frames per second. This would already be a big improvement. And I would wish that these 30 frames per second, as I mentioned before, would be possible with 14-bit uh, dynamic range. In these situations with the Dipper, I also missed some uh, shots because it was very hard to see when the Dipper was actually taking off. Um, and here a pre-capture would be very useful. Again, newer cameras like the R6 Mark II or even this very cheap R10 already have it. Um, so I'm pretty sure this will come in the R5 Mark II, but I would also wish that there would be some improvements in the way it works. Because currently, if you use the pre-capture, it makes in this raw burst mode, it's called, a huge raw file. It's kind of a container that contains the individual files. So um, you use the function, you get maybe 50, 60 images and they're all stored in one massive file and then you need to extract the single pictures either on the back of your camera or in Canon DPP, the digital professional photo software. I find it a bit cumbersome but okay I also don't use this on a daily basis, I could live with that. The bigger problem for me is that because it needs to, it's one big file, this one big file needs to be written on the card before the camera is ready to use again. So if you have a seagull starting, you use the pre-capture function, you shoot even just um, 20 frames and then you realize ah, it was starting the wrong direction, you let go of the shutter, the camera is still blocked for a few seconds and of course the longer you keep the shutter pressed, the longer it will be blocked and in this moment you cannot shoot any new pictures and this was one reason why on the R6 Mark II I was actually not using the pre-capture so often. Of course, I also hope that Canon will continue to improve the animal eye detection autofocus, but here I'm quite confident because the R6 Mark II is actually already way better. And I'm also confident that we will see this option to basically start the animal eye detection autofocus from all different autofocus fields or autofocus zones, such as the uh, single point or the zone, um, which just gives you more control and in the end more keepers. Another thing that I'm not so sure if it will happen is the quad pixel autofocus. Um, so the dual pixel autofocus that we have been having in Canon cameras for quite some years now basically works in a way that each pixel is divided into two sub pixels and then the difference of contrast between these sub pixels is somehow used to determine if the picture is sharp or not. Then the lens element in in the lens uh, is moved so that the contrast is optimized and the picture is sharp. This works well in many circumstances but depending on the pattern or structure that you have on your subject with this uh, line, um, this one line in the between these two sub pixels it might not be able to detect uh, the contrast or to pick up if it's sharp or not and the quad pixel autofocus essentially would like uh, divide each pixel into four sub-pixels 
And I could imagine that this would be a bit similar than what we had with DSLRs with line and cross type sensors, where the cross type sensors are just much more reliable and robust and that don't depend so much on how the subject looks like. And I could also imagine that it would help if we have a kind of a very defocused subject, like a small bird, and the camera is stuck on the background. I'm sure you all had these situations and the camera just won't focus on the small thing in front. Uh, I could imagine that the quad pixel autofocus would also help here. What I would also like to see is a bit a bigger viewfinder. I'm quite happy with the resolution. Um, I was shooting different cameras this year. For example, the Panasonic G9 Mark II, which is a Micro Four Thirds camera, and the Nikon Z8 and Z9. They all have a bigger viewfinder than the R5. Um, the resolution is lower, but the size is bigger. So I would like if Canon would keep the resolution, but just make the viewfinder also bigger. The R5 has a magnification of 0.76 and the Z8, Z9 of 0.8 and I really saw the difference. So I wish they would go also for 0.8 or maybe even higher, maybe 0.85. I saw that the Sony A9 Mark III is supposed to have a viewfinder magnification of 0.9, which is just crazy big. So I would wish that we also get a bigger viewfinder, I think. It could help in some situations to assess if the autofocus hit the subject or not, then we can change to another focusing mode, or it just makes the whole experience, in my opinion, much more nice and gives you more joy. Uh, two more things that I think are unfortunately a bit unlikely to happen is I would wish to have a full-size HDMI port, a type A port and not this micro HDMI where I already broke several cables in this year and even with the cables that work sometimes I need to move it a bit up and down that it's recognized and this is so annoying. I would also like to see uh, two CF Express card slots but I really think this is not happening. This will be something that is really reserved for the R1 whenever it comes out. Let's move to the things that can probably be changed via software. I don't expect a big firmware update for the R5 anymore after three and a half years, but I just hope that it will be improved on the R5 Mark II. So one again has to do with the HDMI and that is the kind of output that you get if you have an external recorder um, in the photo mode. So if I just want to uh, record my viewfinder in the photo mode, currently, I only see the viewfinder in the external monitor. This is in many situations fine, but if I want to take flight shots and record the viewfinder so that you can see how the autofocus works, this means I cannot shoot like this anymore because this one will be black, the internal. I need to shoot like this over the external monitor and try doing this handheld with a 600 millimeter. It's a nightmare. And even from the tripod, it's not so easy because it's harder to aim at the bird. So. Yeah, I hope we get this option. I get like now it's energy saving. Maybe it's a problem of processing power. I don't know. But I would be very happy if we have it similar as uh, I think Sony has it like this and for sure Nikon that you can still use the internal viewfinder and record to an external monitor. I have quite some wishes regarding the filming. Um, so three things that the R6 Mark II can already do. So I'm also sure the R5 Mark II will be able to do this is have no record limit of 29 minutes and 59 seconds. We have a big red frame around the around the display or the viewfinder once we hit record, which is very useful because sometimes I was filming myself and wasn't sure uh, if the red was actually on, if the recording already started or not. And then uh, improvements in autofocus, again, we already have them on the R6 Mark II. I would also hope that the image uh, stabilizer would be a bit better in the filming mode. It's very good in the photo mode. I have no complaints with my 100 to 300 or the 600 millimeter f4 or the 100 to 500. But in movie mode, it just falls a bit behind Nikon. It's still way better than any Sony I ever had, but it's not on par with Nikon. And it seems to be more a camera thing, I assume, because it's only in the movie mode. We will see if this will also be a bit improved. If you know my nature videos that I do, I often like to use slow motion with 120 frames per second. I shoot in 4K. Um, I just like the way this looks if a bird is uh, like sh shaking, beating its wings or shaking its feathers and you see water droplets kind of splashing around. I think it just looks very cool in slow motion. 
However, sometimes I still want to play back uh, at normal speed, which of course I can do, but the problem is the R5 doesn't record any sound in slow motion. And that's a bit of pity. Uh, again, Sony and Nikon can do it, so I hope we will have this here as well. Then I would wish for overall more options in terms of customizability. Overall, I don't want to complain too much. The R5 is a fantastic camera here, but there is like some buttons that you cannot change at all. They just have a function and that's it. And for other buttons, um, it's kind of limited what you can assign to this specific button. To another one, you can assign more functions. And I know this would make the list of options to choose from a bit longer, but I would really prefer because usually you set this up once and then you're done with it. And having more options, I think, is always a good idea. Also, I would wish for some additional options. For example, um, on the Nikon Z8 or Z9, I have this uh, star light view, or actually also on the R10, it's this optical viewfinder simulation, which basically um, you lose the exposure simulation in the viewfinder, so you have no idea how bright the image will be, and it looks more like an optical viewfinder. When would you li like to have this? Well, for me, if I do low-key or I shoot in backlit, it's just some situations where I find it easier to focus and to frame the picture, to follow a bird that is flying through, if I see the bird bright and not only, let's say, the outline of the bird because I heavily underexpose in backlight. Of course, on the R5, you can also turn this off, but you need to go in the, to, into the menu. And I really like on other cameras that you can do it with the press of the button. You can toggle between exposure simulation on and off to always quickly check if the exposure is still fine and then go back in these backlight situations to, um, to this optical viewfinder simulation, as Canon calls it. Uh, on Canon, you're pretty limited in how you do the focus preset. It's a bit different from lens to lens, but on my uh, RF 600mm f4, I have one button for the pro focus preset, and then in front this small wheel or dial that I can turn um, to recall the focus position. On the RF 100 to 300, it's only one button on the side, and it has the function of a preset and recall. There is a small, uh, small switch just above and with this you say if this function is for recall or for um, preset and for me that's not a perfect implementation. I also have lens function buttons in the front and I would like to have the option in the camera to say hey I want to have this button on the side for preset and the ones in front for recall or for some lenses that don't even have functions let's say like my RF 100 to 500 wouldn't it be great if I could just say in the camera I want to use for example I don't know this button for preset and the one here for recall I just think some more flexibility here would be highly welcome another thing that is related with the autofocus is the behavior of the manual focus ring so um, Right now on Canon R cameras, you can decide whether it should turn by the degree that you turn it, and this determines how much the focus changes, or if you turn it quicker, it will change the focus more. Uh, I prefer the latter setting so that if I turn it quickly, it makes a big jump in the focus. And this is fine so far, but I, what I would prefer is more options here. So with Nikon, you can say how many degrees you need to turn the dial or this wheel um, for a complete change from infinity to the minimum focus distance. And I would also like if we had a bit more options for Canon, because for with my super telephoto lenses, I often just want to quickly throw the focus, um, if it's lost or stuck on the background, and I want to throw it to 5 meter where the bird is, or the branch where, the, where I'm waiting for the bird to land. It would be nice if I could do it with a shorter throw of the focus ring. I also get for macro photography, it's nice if you can be more precise. So just having different options here would be very nice. Finally, one last thing where I'm not sure if it's a software implementation or a software limitation is that on the R5, you can have the mechanical shutter as kind of a sensor shield. So if the camera is turned off, I have it set this way that now you can see the sensor is protected by the shutter. The problem here is if you turn the camera off, it takes two to three seconds until uh, the shutter goes down. So I usually try to wait two to three seconds before I change the lens, which if you want to add an extender can be a bit annoying. 
And for Nikon, they have a dedicated sensor shield. It's coming down immediately. As soon as you turn off the camera, sensor shield goes down. I wish it would have the same behavior. Somebody suggested to me that this might be because of the sensor cleaning that the R5 is doing when it's shutting down, but I deactivated the sensor cleaning for testing purposes and it was still having this delay. So I hope this will also be changed. Um, yeah, that's it for my wishes. I'm very curious to see what Canon will implement, what they will maybe save for the R1. Um, or we don't get at all. Maybe they also come with some cool surprises like a tiltable viewfinder. This would be nice for low perspectives. We will see. Let me know what you have kind of hopes or wishes from R5 Mark II and see you in the next video.